Hey everyone, John Stenstrom here from Cast and Spear, where it's our goal to hopefully inspire you to catch your own food. And we're gonna cover all things crimping. We're also going to share with you at the very end a special line that will improve the performance of your shot. Let's get started. So at this point, I'm going to take this shaft, which I know is not the flopper shaft we're working with. I'm gonna actually be putting my uh, slip tip shaft onto this gun and rigging it. To begin with, you're just gonna load the shaft. Make sure it's loaded properly into the gun. Give it a tug so you can make sure that it's actually in the mechanism. From here, I'm going to take a length of shooting line and I'm gonna double wrap this gun. I'm gonna take my crimp that is, uh, I believe this is 200 pound mono. So these are gonna be 200 pound crimps. And I'm gonna slide that through. So you're gonna have that on the line. And for me, my attachment point is here. So I'm gonna run it through the shaft, back through here. You can see it, there it goes. If your uh, line is not on the most forward, some are back here, maybe it's back here. You wanna be careful where you're putting this. Like if you were to have this too long, it can slide over this. It's much more problem getting tangled. Or if it was, if your hole was on this center tab or your back tab and you're coming forward, you don't want to have this so tight that it can get stuck like that. So it's good to leave yourself a little bit, but not so much that you're going to have problems interfering with the, with the one on, in the front. I'm going to burn the end of this. I'm going to get it good and bubbly. And then I use just the base of this to flatten it out. So you get a nice flat cap on there. And then like Moran was saying, we're now gonna pull that line back through and adjust our loop to where we still have a big enough loop to where it can play and not get hung up, but not have so much to where it's gonna get tangled up on anything else that you may have around. So for this particular setup, I think I'm gonna want it right about in here. Would you agree with that, Moran? So we're gonna take our crimps, and you can notice here that there's different size slots on the crimps. So I'm gonna choose the right size, which for this one is a one to two millimeter. And if you look, if you wanna get in real close there, you don't wanna crimp all the way out to the end at all. You wanna leave a little bit of a collar there outside of the crimp. You're gonna squeeze down until you can't squeeze anymore. The crimps will stop at the correct spot. You can see there that I've crimped that spot. And then you're gonna to move to the opposite end and doing the same thing, leaving a little bit of a collar there. You don't wanna go all the way to the end. Squeeze all the way down until you hear, you, they touch together, you can't squeeze anymore. And now you've got yourself a finished crimp. That's not going anywhere. So at this point, now I'm going to string my gun. So you pull it up under the bands. This, this shooting line here, for purposes of this video, it's already pre-measured. But if you're doing this without a measurement on it, give yourself extra. Mono is cheap. You know, you want more. You don't want to have to redo the whole thing. So give yourself a few feet extra to play with. And you're going to pull through here. This gun, I go under the holding, over the shaft, down through there. I'm going to go back. Round. Tuck in there. Okay, up around here, back down again. Up around here again, and now, back there. And this last one is where I'm gonna attach it to the, sh to the shooting line, or excuse me, to the real line. Normally, if you had that extra amount, you don't wanna have this swivel right up tight there. That's gonna be weird. This one's gonna set up, it's gonna be right about in the middle. I'm gonna create another loop there, which will put my swivel right about there. So again, like before, run the shooting line through the swivel, run it back through. Always melt the ends of every knot that you do. I like to go down into the blue part of the flame. I find that the mono doesn't go as black and nasty. Give yourself a nice exaggerated flat top there. Nice comfortable size loop, but not too big, not too small. Grab your crimps, back into the correct slot. Making sure you're leaving a little bit extra of the, uh, the, the metal crimp out there. You don't want to go all the way to the end. Crimp all the way down. Back to the other side. Crimp all the way down. And now you can attach it to your swivel like this. 
reel it in tight, and you're done. I think I did it without saying to do it. But when you make that flat part on the end of your shooting line, you're gonna to wanna to pull it back through to where it's it's touching crimp. You don't wanna leave a tag end out there. That's just something that's gonna get hung up, you know, snagged somewhere. You wanna keep that all the way up nice and tight against a swivel like that. A single swivel is gonna be fine for most things around here. A lot of people swear by putting two swivels on there or crimps rather. You can't go wrong with two crimps. It just spreads out the uh, load a little bit. One crimp is gonna be fine if you're shooting for rockfish, even yellowtail. One crimp is going to be fine but you start getting into the bigger things and certainly when you start getting into cable you're going to want to do two yeah why don't we talk a little bit why don't you walk them through the different types of shooting lines there are between the mono and the cable there's a ton of different lines you know i think we're covering kind of the beginning stuff right here this gun right here is rigged up I believe this is seven strand cable it's coated this is pretty much what they're using down here for the bluefin also wahoo for wahoo you could probably go a, a slightly smaller bigger is stronger and better uh, you start to sacrifice range the thicker shooting line you get especially for these smaller reef guns around here if you're shooting calicos uh, even yellowtail down here they're not going to be pulling a lot so you don't need a 250 pound test shooting line uh, for anything like yellowtail and on down even white sea bass probably don't need 250 pound you're pulling that much pressure you're going to pull out of that soft fish anyway uh, so you sacrifice range and accuracy with the thicker shooting line so there's benefits to going down there's also bad things about going down the thicker your cable line is the less chance that you're going to have of cutting your fish uh, if you ever played a real uh, or strong a yellowtail or something and the only thing going through there now is your shooting line obviously a thicker one's going to be better. It's going to allow you to put more pressure without cutting through the flesh of the fish. You don't have to worry about that stuff with sheephead. You don't have to worry about that with uh, calicos or anything smaller than that. I would go for one of my favorite lines that I use and Petro sells this over there. It's a high performance. Basically what it is is tennis racket line. It's the secret. You can buy tennis racket line in bulk. It's got uh, it's got some markings right here. This is uh, pro line basically. It took me a while to Google to find out what the heck this stuff is but it is tennis racket line. This stuff is, I think is 150 pound braid and it's kind of like a plastic coated cable. It's really thin in diameter compared to maybe the same. I think this is 250 pound right here. And this is, I think 150 pound of just regular mono. This stuff crimps and bends a little more, especially when you're going around the back end here or the front end here. You'll notice in your shooting line, you'll get like a bend in it. Uh, this stuff's really good for that. I've also noticed on this type of line, because it's multiple strands, versus a solid strand. If you get nicks and tears in this, it's gonna retain a lot more strength. If you get a nick or a tear in this single strand, chances are it's gonna break. So this is a little more resilient. If you're lazy and you don't like to change your line as much as I do, I'll go through a whole season with the same setup. Yeah, which it's a good point that he brings up on your mono. If you're using mono as your shooting line, before you go out each time, run your finger down it, just feel it. If you're feeling any nicks, mars, anything like that, you gotta judge it for yourself. I would change it. People start worrying about the cost of changing mono, but you know, you get down there, you see your first white sea bass or a slug sea bass, and you shoot them, and that nick causes your line to break, you're gonna be pretty bummed that you didn't spend a couple bucks to switch out your mono. Um, I always keep a big spool of, of mono around. Um, actually, Moran just taught me about that tennis racket line, so I think I'm gonna probably pick up some bulk of that and start using that as well. Yeah, Petro sells that down there also. It's all set up with the right size crimps and everything. That's a little more expensive, but I feel like it's worth it. One of the areas, you know, when you do have breakages in your line, this spot right here is a very common spot. It's getting friction in here. It's getting pulled right here all the time in the same spot. This is one of the spots that is the most likely spot for your shooting line to fail. Another thing when you're getting new shafts, these holes in here, sometimes they're smoothed out, but sometimes that hole has some rough edges and burrs. Make sure to check your shaft for that. See if it's sharp in there. If it is, you can get in there with a little bit of sandpaper or a fine file and clean up that hole. So it's, if you have a piece of thicker cable a round cable shooting line. Yeah, you yeah. can run the cable through there, put this in a, in a vise, and just go back and forth and work at rubbing all the different corners of that with your cable, and it'll take some of those burrs off as well. Yeah, that's a good point. So inspecting your shooting line, this one I can feel it has quite a bit of burrs. <laughs> but again, I didn't want to say I anything. Think <laughs> that, that, yeah, well, that's the benefit of this line. Yeah, because I am lazy. Yeah. you know, and other people are like me too, where I don't want to change it every time I go out. People do that every time they go out. Jeremy Calkins, 
he likes to change his shooting line like nearly every time he goes out yeah. but it's those failures that haunt you that create that habit of making sure you check your gear making sure everything's fresh because when you have a break off you never forget about it yeah you know well i hope you found that beneficial if you did definitely strike that like button if you have any questions or concerns let me know in the comments below and definitely subscribe to see the next video it will be the last video in this series where we're going to cover how to tune your flopper see you on the next one